In a country racked by high youth unemployment and an economy barely growing above 1%, the newly released results of the 2023 Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study, or TIMS, are purvey of both good and bad news that require an urgent look at what is working and what is not in how learners are taught and assessed. Well, so writes Richard Akwe, Education Holdings Group CEO and education specialist in his latest article, of course, following the release of Tim's 2023 study. He now joins us online to unpack further. Richard, good morning and thank you for joining us here on the SABC at this hour. Good morning, Lisa, and good morning to your viewers. Richard, I can't help but perhaps be, um, start off for the back of, um, you know, our president last night having just signed um, the presidential proclamation to bring the whole of the Bella Act um, into operation. Let's get your thoughts in lieu of what is transpiring in the country and also the steps needed to mitigate against some of the challenges within the educational sector at large. I think, first of all, with respect to the Bella um, Act, which is, which is, as you said, has now been passed into law, I think it is it is an important um, step in terms of providing equal and, and, and equitable access to all South African uh, learners. It, it tries to address some of the challenges around language, um, as well as the stage admission into 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 schools. And I think the bill is an important step. Um, we support the the, the Bella Act. Um, the, um, it, it will present challenges in terms of its implementation, um, but I think that, again, the whole educational uh, technology sector is, is, has resources and is willing and able to, to support um, to overcome those challenges. Okay. All right. Thank you for those opening remarks. Um, perhaps to the TIMS 2023 study report, we've just now seen out of 58 countries that participated South Africa was ranked last in the performance of grade fives in terms of maths. And so talk to us really about the gravitas of, of this um, for the nation, perhaps also as compared to the report back in 2019 as well. Transformation to thriving economies around the globe have always been led by substantial increases in broad-based educational performance. You look at Singapore, you look at uh, South Korea. And it's unfortunate about the situation in South Africa and, and, and outlined in the Tim's report is that the, the level is poor um, and the trend is, is also not in the right direction. Um, and it's not for uh, a lack of trying. There are a lot of people putting a lot of effort into trying to resolve it. But I think what has happened is that uh, we are, it's not a coordinated effort in which we're utilizing some of the resources, both in the public sector as well as the private sector, to address some of those challenges. And as a result, we have um, successful implementation at district levels or school levels, but not enough broadly to impact um, the rankings in, in something like the Tim's report, which is which is critical. So, so let's talk about those gaps, the achievement gaps in in rural areas, language of instruction, socioeconomic status, even the geographic location. What's observed on that front? And because maths is a gateway subject, I mean, talk to us about its importance for the country's global competitiveness at large. It is. It is. It is significant um, because there is the world is is in a a, a competition for talent and and talent um, not only resources across the globe but also within within the country. And we all talk about the fourth industrial revolution. Um, and the transition into into uh, more technology related industries, which is well and wonderful, but you need people who have the capabilities to actually implement and, and, and drive that engine. And at the moment, we are not getting that at a national level, and we're certainly not getting that in the rural level, um, where the significant disparities that are highlighted by the Tim's report, mm -hmm. as well as in quintile one and quintile three schools. Now, some of those are legacy challenges related to infrastructure, to the access to teachers um, and, and access to, to technology. But in reality, what we've seen on the ground um, is that those can be overcome through the resources and, and the capabilities of the ed tech sector. Um, but what is, ha what is not happening is that we're not doing it at enough scale in a coordinated manner in such a way that we can address those challenges. 
So speaking about the coordinated um, methods and, and even capacity building at large, I mean, we know that early, to, early success in mathematics can build confidence and a positive attitude towards the subject as well. And so when we're looking at some of the solutions to date in terms of teaching practices, even just the attitudes and the competence of um, integrating technology as well, what are some of the, the works that have been done? What, what's come to the fore to date? A lot of development that has been done in terms of content delivery uh, through EdTech. Um, and, and that has been significant. And so we've seen improvements um, in giving access to children who um, don't have um, traditional access to, to that content. And it's exciting. They, they enjoy playing with it and they get motivated. Unfortunately, it is at the periphery for maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour, um, once a week or, or twice a week. And it's not consistent. Um, we have found that facilitated ed tech solutions, which combine the, both the technology, uh, which is the enabler, as well as um, human development, um, is, is, is the way to succeed. You mentioned confidence. Um, yeah. Maths is, is, is a funny subject in, in that it, it's not only confidence in maths, but in confidence in other, in other air subjects as well. We found um, in, in many cases where we, we operate that students perform, outperform not only in the maths, but they outperform in other subjects as well. And the principals ascribe that to the fact that they are self-directed and they're confident about their capabilities um, in school. And so that's very important in building out just not a, a better maths learner, but a more self-directed and, and focused learner who, who is exciting about the learning experience. Because mm, Richard, this can't happen in isolation. And so the need for a stronger public-private partnership comes to the fore. Talk to us about how that can change the trajectory of the grade five learners' performance. But also in the same breath, I mean, it's not all doom and gloom. We also saw South Africa's grade nine pupils outperform those in, in some of the other countries that put, took part in the study. The grade nine results to me are, I'll deal with that first, it, it's sure. somewhat a silver lining, but not, not really, because by the time they get to grade nine, many of them have, have selected to go into math literacy. Um, and this is a subject that we have here in South Africa. And, and, to, and math literacy, unfortunately, provides, doesn't provide them the, the access to many of the things that they want to do in later life. And so, yes, they, they may pass matric uh, with math literacy, only to find that the job, or whether it's a professional job or vocational, requires maths of skills of some kind, which they then have to go back and, and, and uh, redo, um, which is frustrating for them. Um, so the, the grade nine results to me are, are positive, but not, not very, not that encouraging. I'm not, I'm not that encouraged. Okay. Grade five, I think that the, the important element of, of the public-private partnership is the ability to, to build scale. Um, and I think that at currently we have a number of, of ed tech service providers operating in South Africa, um, some with, with um, Mem mem memorandums of understanding with, with the DBE, some with some without. Um, and as a result, and in some cases, you have multiple service providers at the same school. Um, and then therefore, we, we don't have the ability to, to rationalize and, and, and prioritize areas which need the, the, um, the services most. Um, okay. We don't have the ability to plan. And uh, Richard, just quickly, because teachers must also be equipped and trained, how do you maximize that just as we wrap up? Teachers are, are critical. Um, yeah. they, they, the learners spend the most amount of time with them during the day, and uh, they are critical to the success of, of learning in, in, in South Africa or in any country. Um, blended learning has been identified as one of the important um, tools to eradicate some of the challenges that we have in, in the educational system. And we are a firm believer in that. Um, to do that, you have to address the teachers, uh, not just the learners. Um, and, and that means addressing teacher training, addressing teacher um, comfort with digital technology, and addressing the use of technology and the data that it provides um, to allow the teacher to better improve their, their teaching um, ability through adjusting their, les their lessons plans through real, real data in real time.
All right, Richard, thank you for your time. Thank you for being part of this um, conversation start. I know that there's plenty more to unpack, um, but we'll leave it there for now. Richard Akwe, Education Holdings Group CEO and Education Specialist. This morning, weighing in, of course, following the TIMS 2023 study, it's meaningful South Africa's global competitiveness and the need for improvements in numeracy and literacy that are also highlighted there. Again, thank you to him for joining us.